Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the Golgi and anterograde transport, which is the fancy name for the movement of proton, uh, proteins uh, from the uh, endoplasmic reticular membrane to the membrane of the cis Golgi. Okay, so so far what we've done is we've activated this star one p protein by uh, taking off the GDP and binding guanosine triphosphate to it instead. And that feat was achieved by the SEC12 protein, which is in the membrane of the endoplasmic reticulum. Now what SAR one p is going to do is it's going to recruit a whole bunch of other fantastic proteins. Now because uh, we haven't got much space over here, I'm going to draw another SAR one p protein here because these other proteins that um, it's going to recruit are numerous, basically. SAR1P, okay, so GTP here. Right, so this is our activated SAR1P protein, which has this hydrophobic tail, which allows it to sit in the membrane of uh, the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, so what it's going to now do is, once I've just colored it in, it's going to bring other proteins that are going to come and bind to it and form a great big protein complex. And I'll give you a clue. This is going to be the COP2 protein complex. So SAR1P is the starting point for the COP2 uh, protein complex. So the COP2 protein complex, this thing here, stands for the COAT protein complex 2. So the CO, sorry about that, I just dropped a pen. Uh, the CO stands for the coat, coat, and then the P stands for protein, and then it's the coat protein complex 2. Okay, right. Now, other proteins are going to come and associate with this um, SAR1P protein. So a complex, uh, uh, well, a heterodimer is going to come and associate with this SAR1P. So here comes along a heterodimer of two proteins, and these two proteins are SEC proteins again. So one of them is SEC23P here, and the other is SEC24P. So we have this heterotetra oh, sorry, not heterotetramer, the other one's going to be a heterotetramer. We have this heterodimer of uh, proteins that are going to come and associate with the SAR1P protein. So here, so far, we have these two proteins that are bound to each other. So SEC23 and SEC24 are separate proteins that are bound together to make uh, this heterodimer. And the heterodimer of SEC23P and SEC24P is now going to come and associate with the SAR1P here. Okay, so that's the first step. Now another great big protein complex, and this one's even bigger. This is a heterotetramer. So this is four here that are going to come over here. Luckily, it's actually only two different proteins. So you have two of each, basically. And these two different proteins are SEC13P. SEC13P. So we have two SEC13P proteins. And then the other one, quite nicely, is SEC31P. So SEC31P. Here, and this is SEC 31P. So this is a SEC 13, uh, 31P uh, heterotetramer here. So what colour should I colour that in? I think it will be blue. So there are four proteins making up this heterotetramer. Uh, However, you don't have four different types of protein. Two of them are identical, basically. Okay. So you have two SEC13 proteins binding together, then two SEC31 proteins coming together to make a protein that overall consists of four separate subunits, and this, therefore, is a heterotetramer. Okay, right. So um, the um, these protein complexes often have a, often are referred to in shorthand as the SEC23P, 24P. Heterodimer, so you'd just call this the SEC 23P24P heterodimer, and you'd call this the SEC 30, sorry, SEC 13P 31P heterotetramer. So those are the names that you'd use in short. Now, this entire protein complex here now, consisting of the SAR1P in the membrane and the SEC23P24P heterodimer, along with the SEC13P31P heterotetramer, this is the COP2 protein complex. So all of this 
Okay, so let me highlight the entire thing in... Um, um, I'll do it in turquoise. That's a colour we, we haven't used in the complex at all yet. So, turquoise. So this entire thing here, all of this, oopsie, that is the COP2 uh, protein complex, or the COAT protein complex 2. So this is the COP2 protein complex. Okay, and what it's going to do is it's going to associate with cargo proteins. So it binds to cargo proteins, basically. So this cargo protein is now going to end up bound to this COP2 protein, basically. Well, the COP2 protein complex. Uh, I've drawn it binding like to the SEC23P, but no, it binds to the whole complex, basically. The whole complex binds the cargo protein. Okay. So now, let's draw a more macroscopic picture. So we'll draw now the... We'll represent the COP2 protein complex as one blob now, rather than showing all its individual components. So what's going to happen is, if this is your endoplasmic reticulum, what's going to happen, basically, is you're going to start pinching off a vesicle. And the reason is, if we draw this going around here, what you'll have is loads of cargo proteins. So let's say these are the cargo proteins here. And of course, this is simplified. There wouldn't just be free cargo proteins. You don't bother doing this entire thing just for free cargo proteins. You'd move more than that. Uh, but to keep the picture comprehensible, I'm just going to draw free. And then you have these COP protein complexes, which I'll draw as these massive great things binding round uh, the cargo protein here. And basically, when the COP2 starts doing this, what it ends up doing is pinching off the membrane, forming this vesicle, basically. Okay, so in COP2, we're representing this purple colour here. So this is COP2. Oops, there we go. And here's more COP2. So in purple is COP2, in turquoise is the... Um, target um, or the cargo protein. So this is ER, the endoplasmic reticulum. This is COP2 here, the COP2 protein complex. And this here is our cargo protein. Okay, and what's going to happen is that overall this ve whole vesicle is now going to pinch off. So you're going to produce a COP2 coated protein vesicle. So here's the cargo protein in the protein vesicle, and then it will be coated in COP2, which is why it's known as a COP2 coated vesicle. So let me just finish this picture, and then we'll end this video here. And we'll continue our discussion, obviously, in the next video. We haven't finished on the anterograde pathway yet. Okay, so COP2 has now bound to all these cargo proteins, and you now have this COP2 coated vesicle. So let me colour these in. So in turquoise, we still have our cargo proteins. Okay. And then round the outside, we have these COP2 proteins in this sort of magenta colour. Okay. And this is now destined for the uh, cis Golgi, basically, the membrane of the cis Golgi. So this whole thing is a COP2 coated vesicle. And we'll continue our discussion where we see how this is going to make its way to the um, cis Golgi, and uh, also then how it's actually going to fuse with the membrane of the cis Golgi later.